Hurry up, Psycho Shy. We don't have all night. I couldn't help staring into the face of a mayor I'd only seen in memory orbs and on posters. The leader of the Ministry of Awesome, hiding in an old house just outside a run-down town in Hoofington. She was staring back at me, her eyes wide, almost like she was expecting another pony to be at the door. Finally, she spoke, but her voice didn't sound like that of Rainbow Dash I'd seen in Night Stalker's memory orbs. It was softer and sounded younger, less of an edge to it unlike the fearless Pegasus from 200 years ago. Oh, I thought you were Charity or... Why are you staring at me like that? She asked. Rainbow Dash? I asked. Then I wanted to hit myself in the face. Shadow, this isn't Rainbow Dash. She'd be over 200 years old, and you can tell she's not a ghoul just by looking at her. It hit me then that this must be Glory, the Mare Bottle Cap told me about. So, I just shook my head, then said, Sorry, you couldn't be Rainbow Dash. You'd look all gross and ghouly. I heard a soft chuckle from the stairs, then P-21 said, I'll admit the joke is still kind of funny, Glory. Oh, shut up, P-21, Glory said, turning back to look at me. Who are you, and what do you want? I'm Shadowstar. P-21 said I could stop by if I needed a place to rest up for a few days? I replied. She sighed, then glared back at P-21, who seemed to have disappeared. She sighed again, then moved aside. Might as well come in. And please don't say that name again. I'm not her, I just happen to look like her right now. I stepped into the living room, looking around the place as I did. This is a nice house. Or the wasteland, at least. Glory stepped past me and walked over to the kitchen where something was cooking on the stove. It smelt burnt, and smoke was wafting up, but she just kept on working on whatever mess she was trying to create. As she worked, I asked, So, why did P-21 say you could just come here and stay? It's not really a good time to have guests. I shrugged. I figured he was just being nice. I ran into him at the store that's run by charity. I was bringing the package from Bottle Cap. She said that you needed it. Her eyes went a little wide as she looked at me again. You're that filly from New Pegasus? The courier, right? Yeah, that's me. I said, walking over to the kitchen table and sitting down with a sigh. Why are you in Hoofington? She asked. Would you believe me if I said that a star creature took over my body and took me here for no good reason? I asked. She frowned at me from the stove. If you don't want to tell me, that's fine. But you don't need to make up a strange story that sounds like a zebra's tail to scare fillies and colts. I just sighed. Figured as much. Still, I didn't intend to be here. I just woke up, and now I'm trying to get home. You want anything to eat? She asked. Huh? I said, looking over at her. Food. Duh. Are you hungry? She asked. Depends on what you're making, I said. I mean, I'm not trying to be rude, but the smell isn't appetizing. She looked down at the slowly bubbling pot. Oh, this? No, this is for Blackjack. She is, well, a cyber pony now, and I'm trying to make something she can eat to help her keep all her limbs working properly. I have a few other things that you can eat, though. Our zebra friend loved some strange-looking meals here, if you like that kind of food. Zebra food? I'd love some, I said, getting up and walking over to a place on the counter she'd pointed to with a wing. I did see a few leaves and a strange gravy-like stuff on them. It reminded me a little of Yaksha's cooking. I took a couple of things and brought it back to the table. Have as much as you want. I personally don't care for them. Glory said, turning off the stove and walking over to me, sitting down on the other side of the table. I started eating and smiling like a filly with a piece of candy. I love zebra food. I have a friend named Yaksha who's a good cook. She smiled a little as I ate. P-21 told me about meeting you. Though he left out the part about you saying you were here for a couple of days. He said Rampage helped you with some raiders? I swallowed with a happy sigh, then nodded my head. Yeah, if it wasn't for her, I'd be dead. 
When I woke up, I didn't have any of my weapons or armor. I managed to find an old security baton at Pony Joe's, then got my hooves on a rusty knife after I killed one of those crazy ponies. That was all. It was scary. I'd never seen raiders like that before. If you're from New Pegasus, I'm not surprised. I've only encountered them here, too. I managed to get a good look at the brain of one after the fight with Blackjack, but not long ago, from what I can tell, they have some kind of virus? This virus eats away at part of their brain until it become giggling idiots who lose most of their intelligence and crave pony flesh. If they're gone for too long, without it, they'll start eating themselves, Glory said with a shiver. I remember the chewing flesh of the first raider whiz. It looked like she'd been eating herself. I shivered as well, asking, Are you some kind of doctor? Once upon a time, yes. I'm a Dashite. I shouldn't be, but the Enclave seems to think I betrayed them, and I was marked because of that. She said in a sad voice. The Enclave's like that, I said. You would say that. Most Wastelanders don't understand what the Enclave is really like for the ponies who live there, she said. I don't know why I did, but something about her sad face, even if it looked like Rainbow Dash, made me want to help make her feel better. So I said, I'm not most Wastelanders. I was born in the Crystal Empire. Her eyes went wide at that. You're from the Crystal Empire? It's amazing. It's not often you see any pony from there, away from the city or Nimbus. I shrugged. My mom took me away from there when I was little. She was trying to find a way to keep me alive. Later, we ended up in Stable 28, so she could hide from some ponies she pissed off. Glory grinned a little. Your mother must really care for you. I just shrugged again. She did. Once. Now, I'm not so sure. She did abandon me for eight years in that same stable. When I escaped and went to find her, all I found was a shell of her former self. She doesn't even remember me. Well, not entirely. Glory gave me a knowing smile and a knowing look. I felt tears start to flow down my face as I looked away. Glory said, I lost my mom when I was young, too. It's not easy, I know. It's got to be extremely taxing on you, I'm sure, since, you know, she's still alive and can't remember who you are. I sniffed. I'm sorry. I keep telling myself that I'm not going to cry, but it seems like every time I try to tell myself that, I can't stop it. I said as I rubbed my eyes with a hoof. Now I'm stuck on the side of Equestria, my friends are in danger, my family's in shatters, and I have a damned price on my head from not one, but two factions. I'm losing my mind to some fucking monster, and to top it all off, Aura's not here to tell me everything's going to be okay. I couldn't stop the tears now, or the sobs racking my body. Glory got up and came over to me, and to my amazement, she pulled me into a hug letting me cry into her shoulder, almost like a sister or a mother would. After a few minutes, she'd just let me cry. Let me get it all out, as my sobs quieted down. She asked, Who's Aura? Is she your sister? Your friend? A mere friend? I sniffed, but kept my face buried in her shoulder. Mare friend. Well, not really a mare friend, more like a griffin friend, I guess. She's a griffin. Most ponies, when they heard or saw that a pony was with a griffin, reacted like something was wrong with me or her. Not Glory. She just held me tighter. Is she the one who's always there for you when you're feeling down? Yeah. She's been my rock for almost as long as I've been out of the stable. If not her, then Stardust or Wingnut or Windthrasher. They've become my family. I said, finally lifting my head. She smiled, then looked around the house for a moment, saying, I know how you feel. My friends are like a family to me, too. I don't know what I'd do without them. I just wish I'd stopped letting them down so much, I said, pulling away from her. What do you mean? From what I can tell, it wasn't your fault that you ended up in Hoofington. It sounds like you found a way home, she said. I felt ashamed as I remembered what I tried to do only a few nights ago. I didn't know Morning Glory, but something about her, even looking like Rainbow Dash, made me trust her and want her to tell her more. So I held back more tears as I tried to say, I tried to kill myself a few nights ago. Shadow, why would you do something like that? 
she said, looking a little shocked. To keep him safe, I said with a sigh. What I said before about a star creature wasn't a joke. I really do have something living inside of me, and she's slowly taking control. She did take control, locking my mind in a world where she was the architect, so she could use my body. I wanted to make sure she couldn't hurt the ponies or griffin I love, so I tried to do the only thing I could think of to stop her, by putting a bullet through my head. Glory took my hoof and pulled me off the chair. Come here, Shadow. I think you need to tell me everything. It might help. A lot. I didn't protest as she led me to the small couch in the living room. She made me lay down on it as she moved to sit in the rocking chair. When she was done, I asked, Why do you want to know everything that happened to me? She smiled. Because I'm a doctor, and I have enough to help ponies. With the small amount you've told me, I can already tell you're suffering some type of depression. You've also tried to kill yourself, which worries me. I just think you need some pony to listen to you. Since I can't have Ori here, then I'll do my best to help you in the way that I can. Okay. But when I'm done, can you tell me more about you and the rest of your friends? I asked. It took a moment for her to respond, but she finally nodded. I think I can do that. Sure. With that, I laid my head down and started to tell her everything. I started with me getting sick, telling her some of what I knew that I learned from some of Mom's memory orbs. Then I went on to tell her about the time spent in the wasteland when I was a foal, to cure my Aquila to Stable 28. I told her about my memory loss, how I had to cope with who I was and where I was from, told her about how I was treated as a foal by the rest of the stable. I told her about how I found the Mark II in my escape, and meeting Stardust and Aura, later Windthrasher and Wingnut. I went on about how we got to New Pegasus, how I made enemies with the Enclave, the Sins, Mom, the Steel Rangers, everything. It took hours to tell her everything. As I spun out my tail, we had to stop twice to eat, and only once to use the restroom. At some point, a green filly came down from upstairs, forcing Glory to make me stop my story for a bit while she tended to the young mare. My Sue found out that her name was Scotch Tape. She'd been affected by Killing Joke as well, and was just getting back to normal. She stayed with us, sitting on the other side of the couch listening with Glory about my life. P-21 showed up as well, lurking by the stairs as I went on. When I finally finished, Glory took a few moments to take it all in, and then finally spoke. That's quite a tale. I'm amazed you've made it so long without losing your mind or your life. I'm also a little worried about this thing inside of your head. Normally, I'd say you're suffering from multiple personality disorders, or some sort of psychosis, but from how you describe it, that's not the case. Scotch Tape shrugged, saying, She sounds nuts to me. There's no name for need for name-calling, Scotch, Glory said sternly. Anyway, I say that for two reasons. What's that? I asked. Is it because you think I have something worse, or that I'm just fully nuts? She shook her head. No. One reason is because with multiple personality disorder, the two personalities can't communicate with each other, or lock one up in a cage like Aquila did to you. The other is because I've read a lot on Grimoire Spell's work. She's kind of a legend in the Enclave medical field. She created a lot of new ways for both Pegasus and unicorns to help ponies while she worked with the research department at Nimbus. When she ran away with her foal 12 years ago, it created an uproar in all of the Enclave. And here I was, thinking Nimbus and Stratus kept themselves separate from the rest of the Enclave, I said with a slightly mocking tone. You might be right about that. But the medical departments all keep in contact with each other. We don't care as much about which city has more power or who's got better clouds. We just care about helping ponies. Dr. Morningstar, the stallion who taught me, spoke highly of your mother and what she did. That made me laugh. Glory and Scotch Tape both looked like I'd lost my mind. It took me a moment to finally say, I'm sorry, but did you say Dr. Morningstar? I did. He's a brilliant doctor in Thunderhead, Glory said. I'm sure he is. I just find it funny because that's the name Mom gave me when we first went to the Wasteland. She changed my name from Star to Morningstar. 
and then later to Shadow Star when my coat turned black. Maya said with a little giggle. Well, it's not uncommon to be honest. I used to work with two stallions, both named Falling Rain. My own is Morning Glory, and I used to work with Morning Star. Enclave ponies aren't very creative with their names, she said, giggling a little. Not like griffins, that's for sure. Do you know how many griffins I've met whose names all start with a G? I asked. Scotch Tape looked over at me. How many? I took a moment to think about it as I said, Gillian, Greta, Grail, uh, Gina, Gus, Grant, Gabriel, Graven, and those are just the ones I've heard in the past two months. I'm so glad Aura and her sisters have non-G names. I had no idea there were that many, Scotch Tape said, her eyes going big. What, griffins or G names? I asked. Both, she replied. That made me laugh. You should have seen the Crimson Canyon on their rebirth celebration, then. I saw over 500 griffins just for that. Well, I'm glad to see you smile about something, Shadow, Glory said. Scotch, at the same time, asked, Really? I nodded to the filly, then said to Glory, Yeah, me too, though I'm not sure it's going to help me feel better. Maybe not, but I'm sure in time something good will happen, Glory said. I can only hope, I replied, then yawned. Maybe we should let you get some sleep, Shadow. You look really tired, Glory said. Eyes went wide, waving my four hooves back and forth repeatedly. No, I don't want to sleep. You can't stay awake forever. You need to sleep. It'll help, Glory said. I can't, I said quietly. Why not? Glory asked, looking concerned. Is Aquila keeping you from sleeping or something? I just shook my head. Every time I sleep, even a little, I keep seeing everything I did in that cage. Okay, to be fair, I only fell asleep once, but that didn't matter much. Even when I was awake, I kept seeing my colt die under the pillow, my daughter being killed by Wind Thrasher, Ravain dying because of me, destroying Cartwheel and more. Glare reached out and put a hoof on mine. Listen, as much as it hurts to relive those moments, Shadow, you still need rest and sleep. You'll go mad if you keep those feelings locked up, and if you don't get rest, you need... I'm scared, though. I said. To my amazement, Glory smiled. From what I learned about you, I find that hard to believe. I don't think it's fear that keeps you from sleeping. It's the fact that you don't want to come to terms with that small, dark side of yourself. The part of you that took it to kill ponies. She was right, and I knew it. I didn't want to understand that part. Reliving those moments would help me understand that darker side. At the same mindset I had when I destroyed Mill City Tower. I felt like it would make me more like her. Aquila. What if I couldn't come back from that mindset? What if I became more like Wind Thrasher when she was under bloodlust? I'd be just like my uncle. I'd find a joy in killing others. It made me think. I'm sick to think about that. But at the same time, deep down, I knew I liked it too. Maybe that curse that haunted our family and auras was real. What if we were destined to live our lives in misery? I looked back at my own family. Mom lost her mind for a while, and almost lost me. She lost my father and my uncle. Oricalus lost his body to darkness and became a monster. My grandmother lived in a shack near the Wall of Death in Crystal Empire. Her husband was a boost of asshole that didn't give two shits about his family, only his own power and status. As far back as I could tell, not a single pony who came from Annette's line had a good life. She even lost her own love went mad and died. Dad's side wasn't any better. Fighting and killing between siblings, depression, pain, loneliness, anger, all of it and more followed his side of the family right back to Night Stalker himself. Mora's family had the same kind of problems as my own. It always led to death or pain, sometimes both. As hard as we tried, we couldn't be happy. We couldn't be normal. She's got a strange look in her eyes. Scotch said, breaking me from my dark thoughts. Maybe that's attempt at her shooty face, P-21 said. No, 
She's just deep in thought, I think. Glory added. I looked towards the not rainbow dash. Yeah, I was just thinking, that's all. Glory, can I ask you something? She shrugged. Sure, as long as you promise you'll at least try to sleep. I don't want to, but I will. I said with a deep sigh. I want to know what you know about Night Stalker. She cocked her head at that. And the first High Council pony? What about him? Then her eyes went wide. I should have seen it before. Your mother married to Nightshade, his great-great-great-grandson. I waved a hoof. Yeah, yeah. That's not what I'm getting at. I wanted to know if you knew what happened to him after he was made a Dashite. She leaned back in the chair, deep in thought. Finally, she said, Not a lot's known about him after he became a Dashite, apart from the fact he was last seen near the absent ruined. I heard they were named after a Dashite who was killed there, I said. She laughed. You could say that, but the Pegasus who they're named after didn't die there. He just managed to kill a hundred highly trained Pegasi, then just vanished like smoke. We only heard his name once from a pony who he'd bought weapons from the day before. Absent Moon. A Pegasus who took refuge with the Griffins until he tried to take on the Enclave. One of Night Stalker's children. His daughter Nightingale, named the Ruins after the Stallion. She always respected strength, and even if he was an enemy, he did manage to kill a lot of her brother's ponies. I never heard that story before, I said. I'm not surprised. The leaders of the Crystal Empire don't like it very much because of Night Stalker's sons were killed there too. Still, Absent Moon doesn't have anything to do with Night Stalker. She said as she adjusted herself in the chair. I had to hold back a grin. She had no idea whether it was the same pony. When she was comfortable again, she continued. Some say that Night Stalker was seen near the ruins around the same time. I'm sure he was. The last place he was seen was in Crystal Empire. To this day, no pony knows where he went there. He fought a lot of ponies to reach the Crystal Empire. But he was wounded during the fight. That was the place he just disappeared. It said that a trail of blood was found leading to a statue of Luna, but no pony could find where he went after that. My father believes that Greta, his most loyal follower, found his body and took him from the Crystal Empire. She attacked an hour after he did, and managed to sneak into the palace while the guards were distracted. That made me think more about what I learned over the past two months about Night Stalker and Greta. Then I asked, Was she seen leaving the palace? No, but that doesn't mean much. Even as an old griffin, she was sneaky and strong. The only thing known about them from that point on is that neither of them have been seen since. It's one of the biggest mysteries in the Enclave, she said. I thought on it a little more, then asked, Who ordered Night Stalker to be branded? She blinked again. I thought that every pony knew that one. Two of his sons brought evidence to, to Council Pony Thunderlane. Night Stalker was accused of being a traitor, and should have been executed for his crimes. But Thunderlane took pity on his old friend and had him branded and banished. Thunderlane? He's the one who banished Night Stalker? I asked, a little surprised and yet not at the same time. I've seen how Thunderlane acted in the memory orbs. He seemed to do as he was told when it came to Night Stalker, but at the same time always tried to push the line. She shrugged. Our history shows that Thunderlane had a good reason. What was the reason? I asked. She took another moment to think, then finally said, Honestly, I'm not sure. I think Night Stalker was helping some faction that wanted to overthrow the Enclave's control over the ground cities. Don't quote me on that. History is not my best subject. I only know as much as I do about Night Stalker because my dad loves that kind of thing. Also, his wife later moved to Thunderhead after he vanished and became a council pony. I wonder if he and Greta ever really left the Crystal Empire, I thought out loud. He, as in Night Stalker and Greta? Glory said with a little chuckle. I'm sure they did. Their bodies were never found. The Crystal Empire is a big place, but it's hard to find a body, let alone two, especially well-known ones like those two. You're probably right. I'm just thinking out loud is all. I said, laying back on the couch. Why does it matter? So much, if I may ask? 
Glory asked. It's a long story. I heard the back of my head with a hoof. Uh, really? Long one? I just want to know more about my family. I grew up most of my life not knowing anything about either side. Both my parents don't talk about it much, I said. With Nice Doctor's side, I can understand. And that family has nothing but bad luck over the years, she said. Tell about it. My mom's side isn't any better, I remarked. I don't know much about your mom's family, just your dad's, Glory said. My mom's side of the family is descended from Minette, I said simply. Minette, huh? I don't know much about the name. Just that she was a mayor who helped build a lot of things that were used by the Enclave even today. She died long before the Equestria did, she said. Well, it doesn't matter, I replied. Well, if you don't need any more questions, then you should really try and get some sleep, Glory said, getting up and forcing Scotch to do the same. Let's go, Scotch. You need to rest, too. You're still healing. Ah, uh, but I'm feeling fine. Do I have to? Scotch Tape complained. Yes, you do. If you fight me on it again, I will use a tranquilizer on you, Glory said, forcing the filly to go upstairs. Fine, Scotch said, then looked down at me. Nice to meet you. I gave her a little wave, then sighed, putting my hooves on the couch as well so I could lay down. Still, I didn't want to sleep, but I knew Glory had a point. I needed it, and I couldn't run away from my nightmares forever. So, doing my best to ignore my terror, I closed my eyes. 